So that was uh, Tony Joe White and uh, Perk Salad Alley. Yeah, lovely music. And uh, what I wanted to ask you, when you were talking about scanning, was the, the scale of things that you can scan. Would it just be like the, a lampshade, or could you scan a building? How would that work? Oh, right. Um, you can certainly scan buildings. Uh, civil engineers um, and uh, surveyors have uh, laser scanners which um, can scan buildings, roads, um, the, the Ordnance Survey for mapping, they use aircraft and what are called LIDAR scanners. They scan the ground as they fly over it, which is quite um, quite something. And um, in fact, just up, up the river, um, you've got a company um, which scans uh, oil refineries and they will then map it um, for various reasons to work out where the pipes are and that everything is um, according to the blueprints that they have of the site. Because once you design a, a refinery, that will change and change over time. And they want to make sure um, that w what has changed tallies with their records. Um, so there, there are scanners which are, can do long range and um, scanners which do close range. And that's what I deal in, close range. And I guess you've got, um, you can do things um, within a room quite easily with my equipment. Um, I think in one shot you wouldn't want to go more than about three, three and a half, maybe, maybe one metre, one and a half metres in, in breadth. Um, right. What you do though is to take scans, rather like a, a jigsaw puzzle or a patchwork quilt, and you then knit them together to make the overall picture. Um, that can take time and there's very sophisticated and expensive software which does it. So. How do the virtual worlds get created? Do, have, you, have you looked at those, how the, how well, the technology well, they're, works? Sure, yeah. um, there are various ways. Um, uh, there, are, there are some very expensive sort of industry standard um, software packages which are used by the film companies. Um, but then uh, closer to home you've got um, software packages costing about £500, such as ZBrush. Um, which, which are very capable. And then you've got open source software, which is free. Um, but you find that um, they, they take more to manage because uh, depending on how well they're controlled, they, they tend to be an amalgam of different people's contributions. So it's, it's more to take on. But the, the, the software, um, from within the software, you can design various um, uh, sort of environments or, or the, the, the scenery, so to speak, for right. virtual worlds. Right. Um, and every now and then you might want to place in the scenery, so to speak, on the stage, um, you might want to place uh, an accurate object such as a person. So if, if you're playing a game and you want to have a, a, an image of yourself, so you, you yourself are one of the characters playing in the game, that's where scanning can come in. If you want to be, um, say, in Second Life, you want to be trading um, or exchanging um, items uh, with others, or if you want to um, uh, assemble a collection of items uh, which are associated with you in Second Life, that's where scanning can come in, because you can scan the items very accurately and um, then insert them into the, the software um, as, as an electronic file, and it will then feature as the real thing within the virtual world. So, if you've designed something to, to have that effect, if you've, if, you've, you know, if you've intended to do it that way, you've created an object that can be scanned, yeah. or you've created a file as a program, a, a, di a digital mm. file, you could print it out using 3D printing techniques or place it in a virtual world. Absolutely, but what you've touched on there are, are very precisely, you've touched on the two different routes to achieving that. One is um, with the software I've described, where you design it yourself, and if you've designed it yourself in software, it's already in a digital code, rather like an MP3 file. Um, it's already there. Scanning comes into play when you haven't designed it in a computer, you've already got it. You're trying to capture the physical thing that you're holding in your hand, so as to put it as an electronic file into the, into the soft, into the virtual world. So there are two different routes. One is you design it electronically on a computer. The other is you 3D photograph it to put it into the computer. And that's scanning. Okay. 
Well, this must be going on. There must, there must be virtual worlds that are effectively operating as galleries and, and showing off sculpture and allowing people to view it all. There are some, and um, the big issue, which um, this, this topic has got to come up at some stage in this conversation, is the, the amount of data that's needed to, to, to um, define the size. And we all know with digital photography, you can get uh, photographs of, of 3 meg, 6 meg, you can go up to 20 meg. <laughs> They're so big that you want to send them as an e email attachment or, or jet them off to someone's smartphone. You suddenly find that they're reduced to something like 18 kilobytes, you know, instead of say, yes, 30 yes, meg. it can happen. Yeah, well, that, that's fantastic because it means it can actually get there. If you wanted to send the say 23 megabyte um, file to someone's smartphone, uh, well, that smartphone will be then occupied for the next sort of half day downloading it um, if the signal if, if the signal stays intact, you know. So it's all about file size. I, I call it the payload. Um, now, if, if I scan something with huge accuracy, it's delightful what you see once you've got it on your computer, but um, the amount of processing time it takes. There was one job I did for a sculptor in, in Norfolk earlier this year, and <laughs> he'd, he'd um, produced a, a clay sculpture, full size, of a Hereford bull. It was nine foot long, and uh, it was for the city of Hereford. It was unveiled by the Queen in June, and um, this file was so big that my, my computer couldn't even open it up. Couldn't e I needed to do a lot of processing on it. So I had to go somewhere else with a very large computer and it took um, three quarters of a day to actually do the processing on it. Um, with the machine working flat out all the time, they are very big files. And that was just the geometry. It didn't have any color on it. So once you start um, getting things uh, uh, into a gallery online, which have the same quality as some of the, the high-class photography you can currently get online, you are dealing with such a large file that um, it's almost um, unacceptable to use at this stage at the moment. And uh, I'm looking at ways... So what, so what sort of bandwidth... Because I mean, we, 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 we hear that in Korea they've got 100 megabits, whereas we've got 2 or 7 or something in the yeah. UK, whatever you think we've got. Yes. Um, it may not be true that there's 100 in Korea, but um, yes. if there was, would that, would that work with, with uh, what you're describing? Um, if you have it. I'm <laughs> this is getting very close to a topic that I get very angry about, um, because the uh, tele telephone companies um, and the uh, the uh, service companies for broadband, um, they have cornered themselves into a trap. They, they, I, we need to have more bandwidth um, in Devon so that people can connect with the world. And whenever more money comes along for helping that to, to be brought about, where does it go? It goes to the market towns, it goes to um, the cities to make their good enough bandwidth much faster because they're competing with each other at that end of, of the game. Um, where I live, two miles from Exeter, we get about, at best, we get um, just over one megabyte um, um, per second and uh, frequently it's less than half a megabyte and it makes it a, a real problem, a real problem. So, um, however, for what we're talking about um, in, in, in uh, file sizes, to have things on galleries, um, the, the path I'm going down is to try and make it more efficient so that even with a low bandwidth, as you get on smartphones, mm. um, you will nevertheless still be able to receive the file that you need to see. Um, of course, with smartphones, it's going to get better with, with um, 4G. Um, but let's uh, be clear, 4G will only go to the market towns and the cities, really. Um, 3G doesn't go everywhere, it doesn't go to where I am. In many parts of Devon, it, you, you don't get it, and 4G will be the same. So, um, yeah, um, when you want to have these objects um, put onto galleries to view them, um, it, it takes quite a long time to load them up. But once they're there, um, rather like YouTube, if you um, put up a, a video file, YouTube straightens it out and makes it, um, basically condenses it so that it's good enough and it will come to your smartphone very quickly. So you can expect the same from galleries. You'll find that the, the hard work is done um, uh, in, in, in the internet by the suppliers. You load up what you can and it might take a long time, but once they get their hands on it, they should be able to make it more manageable.
Right, so there'll be a resolution version of, of a 3D object that, that is going to work on the, on the available bandwidth. Uh, you're, you're saying so there will be, and that, that is the goal. That, that's what needs to be, and I think the only services you find are the ones that have succeeded um, in making it, um, uh, in resolving those issues. Yeah. Okay, well, we can, we, can, we can imagine this, and, uh, you know, if we can imagine it, it may might, it might happen. Absolutely. Sometime. You know, in the next couple of years, let's say. Well, that's what the the internet's all about: is is people power. If we all imagine it enough, then people, then the powers that be have to respond. Otherwise, they won't have much power left. You would think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> It'd be nice, wouldn't it? What's What's the next track? Yeah, the next track. Um, it's a slight diversion now. It's um, John Martin, who sadly died um, about a year ago, and um, it's called Fairy Tale Lullaby, and it's it's not just a ballad it's a lullaby and um, what I like about it is he is all by himself he can make so much noise even when it's delicate and uh, listen to this it's wonderful <laughs> 